Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Remember if you don't already to subscribe down below, give me a thumbs up and to follow me on my various social medias which I will put below and I will put throughout my video. Don't know why I tried to do that in all one breath because that was really quite painful. Anyway, to the topic at hand. So the news this week was that Alfa Romeo are coming back into Formula 1 which is not really a surprise because they have been rumoured and they are going to be the title sponsors with Sauber. So, I was mega hyped for this because I thought this meant that... Road. The advance has gone past, sorry. I thought this meant that we were one step closer to this rumoured Ferrari Junior team which meant that the Ferrari Academy drivers would be coming in, they were going to be nurtured, the little young'uns were going to be nurtured for the future and going on to bigger and better things in the likes of Haas and obviously Ferrari in the future. But once again I was proved wrong. So they announced their lineup today and to say that I was stoked as hell for one of them would be the understatement of the year. It was an obvious one, we all knew it was coming, but they announced Charles Leclerc. I was over the moon. If you followed me on social media for the past couple of years, you will know that I'm a massive, massive fan of Leclerc because I was a massive fan of Bianchi. And he is Bianchi's godson. He is also um, Bianchi's little protege. And the way that I've, I have, uh, I did briefly speak to Charles a few, a year ago now when I did a blog post on him, he actually messaged me and said thank you which I thought was really nice of him and he is he's such a genuinely nice guy and he's so talented and I really took to him when he started to drive in GP3 so I was just like oh yeah so stoked when he got into F3, F2 and then obviously he's had this opportunity and I was just like blown away absolutely amazed so so hyped and then they also announced that they were retaining Ericsson and I'm pretty sure me and obviously we kind of thought it was coming the F1 community but we didn't want to didn't want to kind of accept it but I kind of looked at it and just went why just why you're getting rid of what I would class as their number one driver in Pascal Verlein and keeping the driver that as Luke Smith pointed out on Twitter earlier has achieved more penalty points than he has actual race points. So I had a quick look back through this season, 2017 season, and had a look to see like, the kind of the performance difference between Verline and Ericsson. Bearing in mind that I've only done this for 18 races for the 18 races that um Verline has competed in, because obviously he did have that injury that took him out of racing for, um, I was going to say Bahrain, it totally wasn't Bahrain, for Melbourne and for China. So for the 18 races that both Ericsson and Verline have competed in, Ericsson has outqualified Pascal by f eight and... Pascal has outqualified Marcus in 10. Not much of a difference, but you kind of see who's your stronger driver there. And then I moved on to race finishes. Um, Verline has finished ahead of Marcus in 6, and Marcus has finished ahead of Pascal in 4. This is not including when they've had DNFs. So between them, they've had eight DNFs. Uh, Ericsson's had six, uh, Verline's had two. They both were out in Monaco, so it kind of took an entire race out of this, this situation. So I took the eight DNFs out because obviously if you're gonna have, you're obviously gonna have out, outperformed your teammate if he's not running. So yeah, but because even though there is like only a very slight difference in who's finished ahead of who and who's out qualified who, Pascal is the lone 
the, the lone point scorer in Sauber. So, if you looked at it that way, which most of us do, the one that scores the most points, you are the number one driver, you are the most likely one to get the points. And in this case, your poor number one driver has lost his seat and your number two has once again, actually, because this happened with Felipe and Nazza, we'll all remember, has withheld his seat, maintained his seat. And now you're what, gonna have a rookie that's probably going to outperform him. And you're going to have money coming in. That's the entire thing, it's money. We all know it. They're not keeping Marcus for his talent, they're keeping him because he is pumping money into, into Selva. Which is a real shame. And it's a real shame that Formula One is like this and motor racing is like this. The fact that you don't just get judged on your talent, you're getting judged on how much money you're bringing into things. It's a real shame, and I hate it. But this leaves one seat left, one open seat, and that is the Williams seat. So rumours on the, the grapevine on social media is that um, it's going to go to Kibitza, which no one would really, re really be surprised at. I mean, he did do the Abu Dhabi test. But then there's also rumours about uh, Verline being linked to the seat, to Danny Kvyat being linked to the seat. Um, personally, I would like to see Verline in the seat, but I was on the Kibitza hype train before this happened with poor little Pascal. But I'd love to see Pascal in the seat. However, another rumour I have seen, I see a lot of rumours floating around on Twitter, a lot of them. So another rumour that I have seen is the fact that apparently, don't know how true this is, apparently they can't have someone under 25 in the Williams seat, or they can't have, sorry, they can't have two people under 25 in the Williams seats because of the, the Martini branding. They need someone over. And both Pascal and Danny are younger than me. I am almost 24, so obviously they are under 25 and this is the whole reason for Kibitz is most likely going to get it. Think of that what you will. I, I'll be happy if he gets it, personally I'll be happy, but honestly I, I'd rather it go to Pascal. My opinion, I'd rather it go to Pascal. It's a shame. So it's been a bit of a mixed bag in the past couple of days with things like that. We're all just waiting on bated breath for the Williams announcement. Everyone else has kind of done their bit and we were all expecting it with Leclerc. My heart is absolutely breaking though for poor Antonio because I would have loved, obviously, because if you don't follow, if you haven't followed me for since last year, yeah, if you've only started following me really this year, you missed out on a good year of uh, inappropriate Giovinazzi tweets. GP2, his GP2 rookie season was wonderful for him, it was also wonderful for my uh, inappropriate site. <laughs> I'm a massive Giovinazzi fangirl, and I'm the first to admit it. So I would have given my heart and soul for him to have had that seat, and honestly, I just, I feel robbed feel robbed. And I'm sure he feels robbed. And I'm sure Pascal feels robbed. <sighs> so irritating. But anyway, first, right, before I actually go, can we just take a minute to address how amazing my Christmas jumper is? <laughs> they don't make Formula One Christmas jumpers and they don't make MotoGP f Christmas jumpers, which I think's a bit of a, a bit of a loss. I mean, you could do the greats, you could do cars. I haven't actually found one. So if you do know where they do these Formula One, MotoGP, or even if they do a Lord of the Rings one, 
please point me in the direction because Lord of the Rings is like my favourite trilogy of all time ever to ever be made. Please point me in the direction. I had to, I don't say settle because I do quite, I do like, I do like Star Wars but yeah I had to go with Star Wars instead. But if you, if you know anywhere that does does any of those, please point me in the direction and I'll happily go and just probably spend what remains of my pay. But anyway, <laughs> tell me what you think of the Sauber lineup. I'm not going to be referring to them as Alfa Romeo or Sauber because someone actually called me out on this before and was like, they're not called Sauber now. And I'm like, yeah, well, McLaren are called McLaren Honda, or were called McLaren Honda, but how many of us actually went out of the way to go oh yeah mclaren honda are really crap at the minute but anyway tell me down below what you think of the new lineup who do you think should get the williams seat and what do you think of the sauber the sauber drivers do you think ericsson should have kept his seat do you think leclerc should have got a seat and if you have any links to cool christmas jumpers please tell me Please do, because I'm like using this year in, year out, and I think people are actually getting sick of my Star Wars, Star Wars references now. But anyway, I'm going to try and get a new video up within the next week. Um, I am working next weekend though, in a shocking turn of events, that's all I ever do is work. But for now, I'm going to leave yous, love yous and leave yous. Remember to subscribe down below, give me a thumbs up, and to also follow me on social media. But for now, ciao!